We're in Malta thanks to Construct 3D, and when you're in Malta, if there's a place you want to get a 3D printer, there's only one of them, and that's Patrick Prince. We're going to go inside and take a look and see how it works. Patrick! Hi. Hi, Joel. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, my friend. Welcome to my shop, my crib. The only the shop only that shop. sells 3D printers on the island. How'd this all start, Patrick? Because I can't imagine you woke up one day and said, I want to be the sole retailer of 3D printers on the, in the island country of Malta. So, um, since in my younger age, I've studied electrical and uh, electronics engineering. These CNC machines, they're a bit close to us. You know, interfacing, stepper motors and so on. Oh, that's and right. Then in, uh, when I graduated to them uh, later on, in 2015, someone popped up on YouTube showing some 3D printers. Guilty. And I bought my, um, my first one, how I3. A one how yes. I3. Your very first 3D printer, yes. what led to all of this was a one how I3, thanks to a video that I had on YouTube. Yes, that's it. Yes! And YouTube was like bare, there was nothing to learn from. I remember sending some messages and leaving some messages on YouTube comments between you and there was also Barnacles as well. Oh, Barnacles, days. Jerry. He's a good friend of mine, yeah. And in uh, YouTube was uh, like empty. We had to learn everything ourselves, like bed leveling, why it's, <laughs> and uh, temperatures and so on. It was the Wild West back then. Yes, it was. So from there onwards, when I purchased my first printer, instead of getting a spool or two, I got two boxes of spools. And I started posting on Facebook, look, I'm doing Super Mario and some other things. People started coming in just to see this printer working. And remember those days I spent a week looking at it, working, so it's satisfying. You just kind of stared at yes. it while it was working. It was the I, first I, week. Yeah, I remember. From there onwards, I had my first clients coming in. People started coming in. I contacted my agents back in Europe. Um, I told them like, listen, I've got customers. How shall we proceed and going forward? And they started giving me like an exclusivity to start selling. And we've had one house, then Creality came in. I see that, you have a C of, yes. of Creality. It's a, it's right a Creality here. and I'll tell you why. So Creality, they just uh, came in in 2016 with a full blast with the Ender 3. Hmm. It's not only an Ender 3, the then CR10s came out in a 10 square meter. 10 square you? meters? <laughs> yes. Right. Scott. That's only, not much, Patrick. We had only two shelves which are still with us. Two shelves of these with filament, pegged up with filament. <laughs> People, uh, when uh, came in, it was like a library. You'll see people just grabbing the filament, seeing the filament, and we gave out free samples as well. So people would come and get their free sample. So I would like to test some red. Okay, you can, we gave out. Oh, so people could actually come, because you are the only shop here, people could come and not just, not just see these machines, but try them out for the first time. They can touch them, see them by the, so. That's huge, Patrick. It's all the truth. So with all the truth, our business ever, like went to evolution. <laughs> You've grown, my friend. From a 10 square meter, we've grown to 150 on 3D printing only. Just 3D printing takes 3D up that much space. And we need more. <laughs> we need more space. Well, I see, like I said, this, this massive sea of Creality machines. I've got some Ultimakers in my vision over yes. there. Resin machines over here with all the FDM and the resin 3D printing. I would imagine there's after sales service, training, classes I've heard you offer. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Come with me, I'll show you. Let's go see it. Yeah. We've got printers in front of us and we've got printers behind us. And this seems like a great place to talk about after sales service, yeah. support, and the trainings that you offer. All right. So after sales service, someone comes in, buys a 3D printer. I would imagine if a problem happens, being that you're on an island country, being able to get parts sent from elsewhere might take a while. With that problem, since we are an island, um, I'm stocking up as much as I can. So um, if um, certain parts they're really purchased frequently, we stock a lot of them. So it's, it's normal logic. So like nozzles, heat breaks. Thousands of triggers. nozzles in stock. We've got filament from past COVID experience. We've got, we've like doubled the stock. We're stocked up, we're stocked up. Believe me, we've got, <laughs> we're stocking up. And now we're stocking up on special parts because since you've got repairs and you've got upgrades, so service is split up in two, repairs and upgrades. I, I can imagine there's not a lot of people coming in for parts breaking, a lot of upgrades probably, but I've also heard that if someone buys a machine from you, whether it's these, whether it's those, everybody gets 
30 minutes of training to properly it. use it. Is that right? So yes, that's one of the most important things that I that I did with my business, offering t free. It's important. It's a free training class to whom purchases um, any device from my store. So if it's a 3D printer, if it is a, also a 3D pen, you have to show them how to use it. That's true. So um, a 3D scanners. So everything. It's a it's like a bit of a vocational job. You have to dedicate like um, 30 to 45 minutes. We tell them to bring their own laptop because it's psychological effect. That's good. You're on your own device. It's not like I was in another class. It's your own device. So we prepare their software. We prepare their laptops. Um, we assemble their, their, own, their own printer as well at the charge if it's a kit. Oh. A lot of customers would enjoy to build their own. So they get the Ender 3 in a box. We offer them to take it home, build it, come back, we do the training and we'll check the printer for you for free. That's great. Well, and like you said, bringing their own laptop. Uh, you know, if you have training here, a lot of times people can learn something, but then they have to remember it or have sheets to look at when they go home. Instead, what you've done is enabled them to just, just go once they get home because yes. their laptop has everything they need pre-configured and they've learned it on this. Yes, already. People buying online their printer, they come in for a repair. They come in for a repair or to buy parts from us and they tell us, I spent three months to learn 3D printing with my printer, I almost destroyed it. Listen, come here, we'll give you free training, even if the printer is not bought from us. We'll give you free training, we'll get your printer set up as it should be. Even if it's not purchased from you? Yes. That's really cool, man. You'll feel at home. It's a different story. So actually, that leads me to the next thing that I want to talk to you about, because if someone purchased a 3D printer from you, they got that 30 minutes of training, they went home, they've come back, they've taken a class, they know Fusion 360, they know ZBrush, thanks to you, they're making their own models and they're printing it out. What if these people now find a client and they need to provide 1,000 copies of this model? Is that something that you offer as well? So since our showroom is a printing farm as well, um, yes, we offer that service. Um, we, can, we can also join our community as well. Something that you don't know, we've, we've built by time. Each customer that came in and bought, we made like a Facebook community group and we've got them all in. So if you buy a printer from us, listen, join our group. Oh, join the group, there we go. Join the group. Yay! So everyone is like putting in his, his creations and so on. But what happens next? If a big client comes in with a big order, a call goes to the community who wants to join in. Oh, it becomes a community print that helps out with that. You actually have some examples up here of that. Yes, as well. Can we see those? Yes. Let's go. Come in. So, Joe, what do you think of this? This is awesome. This is this is massive in scope and scale. I like printing big things. <laughs> and these are some projects that coming in, as you see here on the left. These are um, uh, like Maltese actual fountains found in Malta. We, these are only copies that we, we, we kept for ourselves just to show off. The original ones, they are um, in an art museum, one in the north of Valletta and the other cool. in the south of Valletta, yes, yes. That's really cool. Yes. Currently, we're building um, the Farsens Old Brewery. Okay. All right? So it's taking huge amount of filament. And also, we're printing it with a fine nozzle so that we avoid a lot of post-processing as oh, well. Oh, I get it. Yes. That makes a lot Some of sense. projects we printed with a 0.8 nozzle, as those are, and these are with a 0.4 nozzle, which the work is coming out really amazing. Now, now this is something that you offer as a service, right? Someone is, is working with you for this massive scale of project. Actually, museums. That's so <laughs> I mean, cool. This, is a, this will be a, like a private museum, the Parsons Brewery Museum. Those are um, university projects, but being in a governmental or public museum in Malta. Okay. Yeah, museum. Um, other, other projects that we do, like private projects for private 3D printing as well, we do also printing in exotic materials. Can I see that? Yes. <sighs> this is cool. Tell me about this. Um, a student from the University of Malta studying the, her masters, she designed all of that hand, right? It's mechanically used only three motors inside, yes. Three motors power this? Three motors, yes. So um, it's it's 3D print. It was 3D printed on an Ultimaker mm -hmm. using the latest CC, CC nozzle. 
and using nylon carbon fiber filament. Oh, carbon fiber nylon is fantastic. It's lightweight, yes. it's really strong. Weight, weight yeah. was important. And that carbon fiber adds that little bit of stiffness to it. Yes. And that yes. nylon has a little bit of give. It seems perfect. Yes. It seems perfect for this sort of application. Yes. That's why when they come in, or they're coming in for huge, massive projects like these, the one in front of us is just really in the beginning. It will be like a meter and uh, 1.2 meter high with one and a half depth <laughs> with a one meter wide. Now this will be like a big doll's house. Huge. Yes, it's really, huge. This is really huge. Okay. But it's really cool because you offer the ability for people to, to realize larger projects, but also people who want to print in more engineering grade materials yes. and things that they might not be able to do at home. Yes. Oh, how cool. How cool. Patrick, this is awesome, man. I, yes. You must be so proud of this. We put all our hearts in it. So it's not just business and money. It's like a vocation for us, 3D printing, as I told you. I gave like <laughs> these seven years now for 3D printing and I'm willing to give more for people to learn with. We try to help as much as possible to, to the Maltese community. I wish you nothing but continued success, man, because it's, it's really important to bring such positivity there are people here on this island that have a better resource in 3D printing than some of the people out in my country, in the US. They don't have stores nearby or people that can provide training. Here on this island, you provide that. Yes, we do it. So, something small to close with. Oh, For what sure. do you got? What do you got? You've got a lot of jewels. I do. But this one, you don't have it. I did it. I did my, a little modification on it. It's a Maltese jewel. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Oh, it's a mini chow. That's the it's George like, Cross, right? Yes. No, it's the Knight's Cross. Knight's Cross, Knight's sorry, Knight's Cross. Cross. Actually, it's printed in a Spectrum Candy Blue filament. Okay. And printed on an Ender 7 3D printer. Oh, an Ender 7. <laughs> oh. Well, Patrick, I'd love to close it out. Tell my audience right there, look at the camera and let them know where they can go to find more about Patrick Prince. So, Patrick Prince, now it's online. When uh, You can go on www.patrickprince.com. Our Facebook page, our Instagram, so we're on all socials. Now, Patrick, it's typical for me to offer my audience a high five at the end. Would you be up for it? Yes, for sure. Fantastic, okay. A big thanks to Stargate Studios Malta for helping us out here, and a really big thanks to Construct 3D for bringing us out to Malta. This has been a fantastic time. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. And as always, high five. Filament's over there. I'm gonna go shopping. <laughs>